WrestleMania 40, night two is in the books. And ladies and gentlemen, we have entered a new era in WWE. Cody Rhodes, the American Nightmare, has indeed finished his story. He defeated Roman Reigns in the main event tonight to win the WWE Championship in a very, very WrestleMania 10, 20, and 30 type of way. A lot of vibes here at the end with WrestleMania 10, with all of the wrestlers coming out and congratulating Cody, lifting him up on their shoulders like they did to Bret Hart when they ushered in the new generation era, washing their hands of the Hulk Hogan and the muscle-bound stars of the 80s and all that stuff, getting away from one scandal back then, and now with Cody being crowned here in the main event, it really felt like the company is making a conscious effort to, you know, symbolically or visually move past and just wash off the stink of what Vince McMahon has left on them. And that's why I felt like Cody was a virtual shoe-in to win the championship tonight. I predicted him uh, to do so, and I've pretty much been predicting him to do so ever since I was walking out of SoFi Stadium last year after he got beat by Roman Reigns. And I was wondering back then if it would be worth the wait. I was wondering back then if WWE is going to make the fans wait another year to get this done that it would drag on too long, fans would stop caring about Cody, they would lose the story, you know, or it would just be, you know, incredibly predictable. And that was one of my big concerns all year long is going into this year, Cody winning at WrestleMania. Wouldn't that be a very, very predictable scenario? Yes, it would. But they did a great job from Royal Rumble till now, whether it was an intentional or not, with The Rock coming in and being a part of this and really, you know, changing the path that we take to where we didn't really, for a little while there, know what was going to happen. We had a lot of theories of what could happen, double agents, you know, a rock turning on Roman and, and vice versa, or, you know, Cody losing again and Rock and Roman going on to have their match next year. Lots of different ideas that fans had, but, you know, in the end, I just saw no way for the story for Cody not to finish it here. Last year, a lot of fans were pissed, but at least I could understand the argument on the other side, even though I didn't agree. I wanted Cody to win last year, but the fans who, you know, had points about, you know, why maybe waiting another year would be good had some fair arguments. I don't see those arguments this year. I wouldn't have been able to listen to those and and accept them because it just wouldn't have made any sense. I think it would have been a crazy decision for WWE to do anything other than, excuse me, to do anything other than put Cody Rhodes over here tonight when they have made you know, such a, a conscious effort to hammer home the fact that this is a new era. Triple H opening up the show on night one. Stephanie McMahon opening the show tonight on night two. And the announcers, you know, talking about the new era. Sami Zayn ending Gunther's long run. And here for Roman Reigns just to continue rolling after this, you know, three, over three and a half year run that he's had uh, would have just been... I think really disappointing to too large a section of your audience. Roman definitely had his fans out there. Roman had his fans in our chat tonight, and I'm perfectly fine with that. I like people to have fans. I'm a Roman fan, but even me, as big of a Roman fan as I am, I couldn't see any scenario where walking out of the out of the building tonight still undisputed universal champion would have been a good idea. I think that would have created too much backlash that WWE, quite frankly, just doesn't need right now. And I think Cody was just the guy lined up all the way. And I'm happy with the way it came off in the main event. As we saw tonight, we didn't get like an ass load of interference, but we got some interesting ones. We got enough interference to where I can honestly say that maybe I'm slightly disappointed we didn't get Stone Cold Steve Austin. We got John Cena in The Undertaker. I had thrown out a lot of different possibilities and scenarios for... Uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin, if Rikishi was out there for Austin to run him over on a four-wheeler and shit. And even last night, we talked about the possibility of, you know, Austin coming out, you know, and, and being the reason that Roman lost. Maybe that takes away from Cody. But when we saw Cena come out and we saw Undertaker appear, I thought Austin was going to complete the trifecta. And I thought maybe the celebration in the ring was going to be with the Attitude Stars, with Undertaker. With Cena, with Austin, with Triple H, you know, and some of the current stars, this big like love fest might, might have been cool. So we pretty much got all of that, but without Stone Cold Steve Austin. And it's interesting why he wasn't here. I thought he would at least make an appearance, but maybe he didn't want to. Who the hell knows uh, with that? But uh, I think this also has to be a record 
Tonight, on night two, do you realize this? On night two of WrestleMania, we had four world championship changes. Not just title changes, world title changes. Twice in the opener, then with Bailey and Io, and then in the main event. That's got to be a first, huh? So uh, overall, tonight's night two was way better than night one. I really, really enjoyed tonight's show for the most part. It should be important to say that we're not treating this as an actual moving on. You know, the Vince McMahon lawsuit, the allegations, the consequences that are still to come, and the changes in the company that could be affected by this lawsuit aren't over yet by any stretch of the imagination. But still, it feels like WWE is trying to get the process moving of shedding that old skin deliberately. I mean, not deliberately, subtly, but not so subtly, you know, letting the fans know we're moving away from Vince. This is the Paul Levesque era. It was repeated several times throughout the weekend. It seems like not only does the talent and the executives fully support Triple H, uh, you know, sounds like he's got the support of the TKO board as well. And with Stephanie McMahon making an appearance tonight, you know, she does have the unfortunate you know, situation of being Vince McMahon's daughter and the belief that, you know, most of us have that there's no way these people did not know of this sick ass behavior of Vince. But the fact that she's there, you know, Triple H, Stephanie, The Rock, you know, if they're going to be the ones that are going to be taking over the reins of, you know, running <laughs> WWE, you know, when I think about 25 years ago, what I envisioned the future being, it certainly wasn't this, but I don't hate it. And I'm, you know, if anything, I'm happy that to see that the company and the talent both support Triple H. All of the talent really seems to prefer him. We've heard from multiple talent that since Vince McMahon has gone away, there's been a level of stress that's kind of evaporated away from backstage and morale and whatnot. So, you know, all of that is is part of this. And Vince McMahon, you know, for the first time in his life was sitting out a WrestleMania, you know, watching the company actively moving past him and moving forward without him. And let it be known that we don't want anything to do with what used to be him. They're no longer singing America the Beautiful. They sang the national anthem last night, and they sang God Bless America tonight. I don't love that because I prefer America the Beautiful, but if that's what WWE needs to do to move past and shed the Vince skin, because America the Beautiful was a personal decision of Vince, he liked the song better. So if that's just one more thing that they're doing to, you know, maybe, you know, tell him, we're pissed at you for what you've done to our reputation, you know, and what you and the, and the effect you could have on a lot of other people's jobs due to your behavior. Uh, you know, it, it feels like they were sending not only him a message, but the message to the to to the fans and just kind of a, a washing off cleansing, you know, personal cleansing for them. Uh, you know, and granted, this is all just done on camera for a WrestleMania, you know, so it's not official and doesn't really technically at the end of the day mean anything. But you could feel that that's what they're trying to do. And uh, I think that's great. I, I would distance myself from that sick sack of shit uh, as much as I could, too. Cody did mention during WrestleMania weekend that if he wins, he would like to redesign the title. So I don't think a WWE redesign is really going to happen. I think the, the title that we current, Cody currently has is the WWE title. What I think Cody is going to have is a custom title. So like the Smoking Skull belt, like the Spinner belt, Cody's going to get one. And I think his is going to look like the Winged Eagle. I do. I really hope they do that. The fact that they followed through, they told that story. Corey, Cody wouldn't be mentioning changing the belt design and then that not be an option. It obviously must have been discussed already. There obviously might be a prototype already made that we get to see tomorrow. I think it would be awesome if Cody Rhodes brings out the old WWF championship that Dusty held in his hands in Madison Square Garden when he beat Graham by count out, but didn't win the title. And Cody apparently owns that belt. He has it in his possession. He brings that out. You can't wear that as the championship, but he might have it out there. But then maybe if he had both belts, he had that belt that his dad held and he has that moment, you know, there. And then he unveils the new Cody belt. You know, when I lose this, then you can go back to this, but this is the belt I'm going to carry the American Nightmare custom belt, and then boom, that motherfucker hits WWE shop and sells an assload of them. I might even buy it. 
But anyway, welcome now to your WWE WrestleMania 40 Night 2 recap. We heard a little bit before the show that uh, I think it was reported by Fightful Select. They should get credit for this because a lot of other people were just posting it and not, uh, not offering proper credit. But it is going to be Seth Rollins and Drew McIntyre opening WrestleMania 40 for the World Heavyweight Championship. Incidentally, in my predictions tonight, your boy went perfect. So for the weekend, I only got two matches wrong, and both of those matches were last night. Santos Escobar and, uh, and Dominic's tag match against each other was wrong, and I also got Jimmy and Jay wrong. Everything else I got right. I got the two teams pulling the championship belts down right in the ladder match, and I had the outcome here correct as well, maybe with an asterisk because I definitely didn't predict uh, Drew McIntyre to win the championship, but it opened up with Drew McIntyre and Seth Rollins. Drew gets a big bagpipe uh, intro, and Seth Rollins gets a crazy intro from some, I don't know, Philadelphia music group, but they all dress like batshit insane people. They're in these outlandish outfits. There's about 50 of them. They're all going around the ring like uh, Adam Rose's party squad or whatever the fuck it was. And then Rollins comes out. And if you thought he was dressed like a complete fucking dickhead last night, you should have seen what he had on here. I don't even know how you describe what this person wears. When you are given this outfit, how do you even know where the armholes are or where your head's supposed to go? I'd have this thing all upside down and I'd have my fucking dick coming out of the foothole. So I wouldn't even know what to do with it. And it's just ridiculous. So Seth, he's out there. He makes this big entrance. All these people follow him down and they do a complete circle around the ring and then leave. It was pretty elaborate, uh, but it was also pretty cool. And Seth Rollins, of course, did a clopin. He closed last night, opened today. That's got to be rough, especially since he got pr worked over pretty good in that match last night, and he's on a bum leg, and he's kind of coming off an injury as well. Now he's here facing Drew McIntyre, and of course, CM Punk was the guest commentary color guy for this match as was set up a couple weeks ago on Raw. So the match opens up as soon as the bell rings, boom, Drew McIntyre catches Rollins with a Claymore. And you're like, holy shit, it made me think of Seth Rollins and Brock Lesnar from WrestleMania 35. Didn't they open the show? You know, and Rollins kind of ended Brock relatively quick there. And it kind of felt like that. I'm like, oh my God, is Drew just going to squash Rollins here? Uh, but he didn't. Rollins was able to kick out of that Claymore. And they proceeded to have, you know, a pretty crazy match. They were all on the outside. They were near the announce table a lot. Drew McIntyre very focused on CM Punk. Uh, Seth Rollins hit, you know, McIntyre with a stomp on the table at one point. He like cleared both announce tables off to give him runway, runway room. And he ran and hit him with a pretty awesome stomp. And in the ring, McIntyre hit a couple of Claymores and Rollins hit a couple of stomps, but Rollins kicked out of two Claymores in the ring and Rollins, uh, you know, hit a stomp on McIntyre, which he also kicked out of. And then, you know, they go to the finish and McIntyre is out there kind of jawing with Punk again. And I think they just find themselves back in the ring. And I thought we were going to have Punk kind of a part of the finish. He wasn't really. He was just kind of out there talking with McIntyre. And then McIntyre is able to, you know, nail Seth, who is not 100%. He's weakened from the night before, bad leg, coming off of an injury. You know, he's really up against a wall here. And as he was kicking out of all of McIntyre's offense, you could see it on McIntyre's face a couple of times during the match that he was getting frustrated and he was also really, really surprised at the level of toughness of Seth and even maybe doubting his own strength because, you know, he seemed to really kind of doubt himself. Oh shit, maybe I'm not a badass, as badass as I think I am if this guy who's already injured, already compromised, already not 100% is, is kicking out of all my shit. You know, and you could tell, it, you, Drew, Drew get a, did a great job of telling that story facially. You could tell it was getting to him. Uh, but eventually he uh, delivered, I think, what had to have been the third or fourth Claymore to Seth Rollins. No getting up from this one. Rollins goes down and McIntyre wins. So I was immediately suspicious. You guys saw me in the uh, in the watch along. I'm like, this can't be it. I'm not necessarily saying that McIntyre winning was a big surprise, but they just announced the date and venue 
for Clash at the Castle, which is coming up in the middle of May, a couple of weeks after Backlash in Scotland. That is where McIntyre should have his world title victory is there. So I predicted him to not win the title here tonight. I predicted Damian Priest to come down and cash in. But he did win the championship. And I'm like, the whole time, I'm like, no, this can't be it. This can't be it. There, there's got to be something going on. And he does a lot of celebrating. And one thing that was interesting was the the look that McIntyre and Rollins gave to each other. Rollins looked like he was legitimately shoot crying. You know, like really sad that this reign ended. You know, felt, you know, like... uh he worked so hard last night in that tag. He lost that, and now he's losing this. His world is crumbling. Uh, you know, he looked seriously dejected. Rollins then leaves, and McIntyre is there just celebrating with the title. And the longer that he's celebrating, and the longer they wait to go cut to the next video package for the next match, the more I'm like, uh, okay, it ain't over yet, because all of that trolling that uh, McIntyre did to CM Punk, the merchandise, you know, the video packages, the the Instagram videos, it's just been a constant troll job. There has to be a payoff for that. And that payoff needs to be here. So if it didn't happen after the fact, or if it didn't happen during the match, then I'm like, maybe it's going to happen after, you know, Damian Priest had no real reason to run out there right after the match with Drew winning because Drew was, was strong. He was fresher than Rollins. If Rollins would have wound up winning the match somehow, then then Matt, then Priest could have come out and cashed in on him. But McIntyre was still pretty strong after the match, celebrating, and then he starts walking around the ring. And I'm like, yes. And I fucking knew it. I'm like, they wouldn't do this if something wasn't going to happen. And he climbs up on the announce desk. Punk is still sitting in the nice, comfortable chair. Same one I've got right here. Same exact one. And he's sitting in it, and he's just shoving the belt in his face, trolling him. Punk's being uber cool during all of this. He's like, that's good for you. I think it's fucking hilarious. I can't hear anything you're saying. Uh, I, I can't believe you're so focused on me. Just really cool, calm, and collected. Uh, but McIntyre continues to get in his face, and then Punk gets up and trips him. And I'm like, yes, because I knew what I knew it was coming. Punk trips McIntyre. He falls on the table. Punk removes the arm brace. So I don't know if that means Punk is technically cleared or he's a lot closer to being cleared than we thought. Uh, but Punk took off the neck brace or the arm brace, excuse me. And uh, I forgot what he did. He put Drew through the table. What did he do to Drew after that? Hurt him some more. And then you hear Judgment Day's music and I'm like, fuck yeah. Outcomes. Pre you knew it last night too. I called it in night one. I'm like, he's got new. Usually you got new fancy gear when you're going to win a title. His hair was all did up. He got his hair did. Looked real good. And he's kind of wearing, so he just had a different look about him. And I was like, that looks like a guy's about to win the world championship. And uh, I gave him a lot of shit in the review last night. I'm like, motherfucker, in, ni in night one in the main event, you had at one point both champions motionless in that main event. Why the hell didn't you go out there? So you better go out there tomorrow night. And I was confident they were saving it for here. They were. Out comes Priest. Oh, that was such a great moment. Such a great way. They paid off his cash in well. It wasn't a flop. Uh, and it was it was executed perfectly. And I love the it little extra thing that I actually didn't predict. And that was McIntyre winning the title first. And then Priest cashing in on him because of CM Punk. You know, I had Punk interfering maybe in the match, definitely getting involved, maybe injuring McIntyre, you know, allowing Priest to come in and cash in, but having McIntyre full-blown win the title and then continue with his trolling on Punk until Punk attacks him and Priest cashes in, that was the better way to do it. I'm actually kind of disappointed in myself for not predicting that yesterday, but I definitely predicted Damian Priest to win the championship in this match. I did not want to see him out in Cody and Roman. It had to be done here. And if he would have still been uh, Money in the Bank winner by the time we got to Cody and Triple H hugging and shit in the ring, I would have been nervous until they faded to black. So uh, Priest coming out, winning the championship was great. Celebrated with a very elated Judgment Day on the stage. Him and Mommy next to each other with those matching belts. Mwah, chef's kiss. My God, looks so good. Very, very happy for Damian Priest. Now, we talked about this whole scenario during the predictions and for the past couple of weeks in the event that Priest does cash in. I personally believe that Damian Priest should kind of have like maybe a short run here. I think that it's kind of crowded, I guess, at the top. And Priest had a money in the bank that you had to pay off at some point. You're running out of time with that. The next one's about to be here. And, you know, Priest becoming world champion. I've, I've liked Priest a lot. 
I I think he's a great talent. He really impressed us last year at Backlash in the Bad Bunny match. And I was uh, all on board with him winning the championship. However, you know, things are really, really exciting right now in WWE. And you've got Punk and you've got Drew and you've got Seth and you've got Cody and you've got Rock hanging around. You know, you got a lot of, uh, you know, world championship contenders. And I think what you do is you book a triple threat at Clash at the Castle, Damian Priest, Drew McIntyre, and Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins is definitely owed another shot at the title after the way he lost it here. So you book that in a triple threat in the main event in Drew's home country. That's where you do it. And it's the main event. It's the final match. So that's what I would do for Clash of the Castle. But in the meantime, Damian Priest is our world heavyweight champion. We will see if they give Damian Priest a longer run than what I'm predicting them to give him. I feel, I mean, shit, it could be Drew and Cody at Clash. Who knows? But I feel like a, a Drew, Priest, Rollins, triple threat main event clash at the castle is the way to go there. So uh, I would give Drew his moment at the clash. And then you book Drew and Punk at SummerSlam, maybe even sooner than that if Punk is healthy. Maybe Punk gets a match at Clash of the Castle. Who knows if he's healthy enough. Uh, and then Seth Rollins, I don't know what he does. Uh, honestly, I would like to see him maybe have a, a feud with Roman Reigns, but Roman and Heyman shared a hug tonight, apparently on the stage at the end of the main event that kind of maybe might make fans think that we're not going to see Roman for a little while. That's very possible. Um, but Rollins and uh, and Roman may be feuding for a while. Could be fun. And then next year, I think, in my personal opinion, that the two big championship matches should be Rhea Ripley and Bianca Belair and Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins. And I think Seth Rollins, the next, I've always said, I've maintained ever since the Hell in the Cell match that the next time Seth Rollins and Cody Rhodes get in the ring, Seth Rollins should beat him. So what a better place to do it than at WrestleMania 41 after Cody Rhodes holds the belt for a year. Rollins wins the Rumble. You rekindle that rivalry, and this time Rollins gets his win back and beats Cody Rhodes. And Cody will be champion again. No big whoop. Uh, so there's lots they can do. But Seth, Seth could have an interesting year, especially since I don't really see him going, getting back near the world title unless they do it right away. You know, Rollins... Rollins may feel like Cody owes him. Cody may feel like he owes him. Cody may offer up a title shot. You did a lot for me at WrestleMania. I appreciate it. So just so you know, anytime you want a shot at this, it's yours. You know, they, they might just kick right off with it. Backlash, Cody and Seth. <laughs> I'd wait until next year, uh, but they could just do it right away. We'll have to see. We will have to see. But either way, Damian Priest, new world heavyweight champion, and I loved the way they played that off. It was really awesome. Philly Street Fight was up next between the Final Testament and the Pride, I guess, Lashley and the Street Profits. This was okay. Nothing really great here. We did have a surprise special guest referee, Bubba Ray Dudley. So Bubba was out there looking all Alex Jonesy. And he comes down there, and boy, if he doesn't, uh, if he, <laughs> if he ain't got WWE balls on his chin already, oh my God, wait till his next podcast. So he's out there for that. Uh, they did some fun stuff with the tables. Montez uh, did the WhatsApp, or no, Dawkins, I think, did the WhatsApp thing, uh, and they tried to set some tables up, and one of them botched. You know, they couldn't get the leg right, and then Cross fell down on it, and then it was already it was already pre-cut. You could tell it just broke easily right in the middle. It looked like shit. They went out and got another one and completed the spot, which was Montez hitting a frog splash on Karrion and Cross through the table after all three guys had spent several minutes just wearing out poor Karrion and Cross with the kendo sticks. Uh, they were splintering all off, so he just got his ass kicked. And uh, the girls got into it. B-Fab um, side Russian leg sweeped. Scarlet off the apron through a table. For no reason. <laughs> I don't think this match needed that bump, but we got it. Whatever. Pride wins. And I'm fine with that. I predicted them to win. Uh, I like them better, to be honest. And I, I like Lashley better than Cross. And I, I like Cross. I'm glad he got a WrestleMania match here. Uh, I'm hoping that the faction does something, but I'm just not into the tarot card and the black and white. I just, just don't give a shit. <laughs> so, uh, but the match was fine and it was uh, about what we thought, but definitely not as good as the Chicago street fight at WrestleMania 13. LA Knight and AJ Styles was pretty good. I didn't hate this one. Uh, AJ Styles, 
Uh, he had some new music. He came out to some new music. I didn't even notice because I was talking during it, and then you guys were bringing it up in the chat. Holy shit, new music for AJ. Sounded pretty good. I think some uh, hip-hop vibe to it or something. Uh, LA Knight drove up in the Slim Jim car that they're giving away, and there was Slim Jim shit at uh, ringside. We had sponsorships as we did last night. Dude Wipes was back. We had Dude Wipes last night uh, being uh, chanted <laughs> in, the, uh, in the audience. So uh la knight and aj had that going on i was really thinking that la knight needed a good solid wrestlemania match maybe on his resume and this was the best opportunity to have a match like that because you're in there with aj styles i would say the match was very good i wouldn't say it was great though uh it wasn't bad by any means just like last night i felt like there was nothing at all wrong with this match but it wasn't one that i'm going to probably remember in three years you know, uh, but at the end of the day, LA Knight got the win with the blunt force trauma. He needed to win this. He needed to beat a legend, an icon, a Hall of Famer like AJ Styles. If WWE has any plans to still use him as a top, you know, top performer in the company, he needs wins like this. So uh, beating AJ Styles was just fine with me. Congrats to LA Knight on a good WrestleMania match. I'm glad that you got on the card because last year you're in the city that you're named after. And you still didn't get on. Then we had the United States Championship Triple Threat, Logan Paul defending against Kevin Owens and Randy Orton. Kevin Owens, really cool entrance. Uh, on the way out, he ran into Sami Zayn, who gave him you know, his endorsement, just like Owens did for him the night before. That was really nice. And then Owens comes out and he's on like a golf cart and he starts to drive it down to the ramp. And then Randy Orton comes out and uh, Owens backs it all the way back up the ramp. He's like, come on, hop on. And Orton's like, okay. He hops on the back of it and Owens speeds down the ramp and Orton's going, slow down. And they get all the way down there. That was pretty funny. And then we have the triple threat match and it was basically just Orton and Owens taking turns and collectively beating the shit out of Logan Paul. Eventually, it was going to occur to the two of them that it was a triple threat. Eventually it did. They fought a little bit. Uh, Logan Paul uh, busted out the brass knucks and I had the finish pretty much called. We saw what was going on in the ring and I'm like, okay, Logan is on the outside of the ring. He seems like he's down there waiting for something. Owens and Orton are in the ring. They're both battling it out. I'm like, he's there. One of them's going to hit their finisher on the other one. And then Logan Paul's going to come in with a frog splash on one of the bodies and pin them. It was basically the same sequence, but he did steal a win. Also, the prime water bottle was back out there. It wasn't KSI. It was, I forgot his name already. It was some, some guy who barks speed. His name's speed and he barks. That's all I know. <laughs> and he was out there. He got beat up a little bit by Randy Orton. The match was fun. And again, in my predictions, predicting Logan Paul to retain, okay, great. How do you envision something like that going? Pretty much exactly what happened here. So uh, we had that one pretty much pegged as well. And I'm glad that Logan Paul retained here. He was set up to retain and a triple threat. The, the triple threat match gave away the ending to me. You know, if this would have been one-on-one, -on -one, might have been different. Triple threat, of course, Logan Paul is going to retain here, and Owens and Orton will likely cancel each other out. So uh, Logan Paul gets the win and is still United States champion. And you know what? Honestly, I'm fine with that. And he got to wrestle right on top of his own prime water bottle. And I, they also had a C4 sponsorship. So they got energy drinks and they have hydration. They've got all their bases covered if you're thirsty in WWE. But me... I'm a Gatorade man, and we even had Gatorade chants on the show tonight during Logan Paul's match, which I liked. I think people were even chanting, we want water, <laughs> we like water, which was also pretty funny. So that was, uh, it was an entertaining match, and that's what I was most uh, concerned with. Um, and that was, that leaves us with our final two matches, two title matches to close the show. Semi-main event, second to last match on the entire pay-per-view weekend goes to Bailey in EO Sky. And I love, 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 love that. Bailey gets a special entrance and it's weird. It's weird. I don't know what the fuck is going on here, but they got like a pyramid on the video wall. And then she is carried out by, f by four greased up shirtless men no one of them was not me uh and she's carried out there she's got a great looking outfit on all blue and gold looking and she's smiling but they just carry her a little bit out to the ramp and then put her down and then her music plays 
It's the worst special entrance I've ever seen. And I didn't understand what it was. I had no idea what the fuck I was even looking at. So as she's coming down to the ring, I think it's Graves who says the town that she lives as she's from uh, in San Jose has like an Egyptian park. And so he speculated that maybe the entrance had something to do with that. So at least that makes sense. At least this is something paying tribute to her hometown or whatever. Uh, but to a fan who didn't understand this, I'm like, what the hell? So it was not my favorite special entrance of the weekend. It was just weird. It just came off weird. And it looked low budget. Just get four greasy guys, carry you out, put something on the video wall. That's the best you can do for Bailey. I thought she'd go back to the hugger or something like that, but uh, that was kind of funny. Uh, EO Sky also uh, comes out uh, like a dying fish doing her move mannerisms when she's coming down to the ring. I, I ref during the watch along. I'm like, have you seen that story in the Florida Keys where all the fish are like dying and they're like just spinning around in the water? Uh, that's what EO Sky looks like to me when she's coming down, making her entrance. So prior to this match, you know, as we were going through the show here, I'm like, you know, we had two title changes in the opening match. We had McIntyre picking up the world heavyweight title and then got cashed in on by Damian Priest. If Cody wins his story later or finishes his story later, that means for Bailey to win here, we're going to have four world, not just championship, but world championship title changes on one night of WrestleMania. How's that even possible? How does that math work out? You know, and, uh, I thought maybe that was a lot. Now, there's no rule like, that they can't do that. So it's not like it wasn't going to happen. I would hate to see Bailey's win, especially the story they've been telling with her and EO Sky and Damage Control. This is Bailey's match to win. If they were to take her, take that away from her just because they didn't want to have too many title changes on the same show, that would be stupid. Put the shit on night one if that's the case. But the match was really good. I was worried about it, uh, but it was solid. I would like to get an update if anybody has one on Bailey. There was uh, an early uh, dive uh, through the ropes to the outside onto EO Sky, and when she and when Bailey came down, it looked like she legit tweaked her knee. She kind of came down and she had this look on her face like fuck, like she automatically knew something was wrong. She knows she's about to win the championship here. And she's already thinking about, I'm going to have to forfeit the title. I just, I just tore something, you know, and she kind of had that look on her face and she was a little wobbly on that leg in the match, but EO Sky was also working the knee, actually working both of them. So for a lot of the match, you know, Bailey is selling, but there was a couple of moments there where it looked like, where it looked like she wasn't selling. It was legit, you know, like she's like, oh shit, you know, like I know something's wrong, but you know, hopefully I can just get through the match and have the moment and then we'll deal with it later type of thing. I could be way off. I hope I am. I hope I got worked. I hope that I'm just, I'm just really, really gullible. And I believe Bailey set Bailey selling, um, because she definitely had this, this vibe to her and, you know, in her body language, but she was able to recover. You know, there, she went to the top rope a couple of times. And on that first savage elbow drop, she came off the top rope funny. And I'm like, okay, that could have been her selling the knee or her knee really being hurt. I really legitimately did not know. And so I was worried the whole match uh, about her. Uh, she survives, you know, the uh, the, the moonsault of EO Sky and EO's onslaught. Uh, I thought the one spot in the match where she catches EO and is about to hit her with the rose plant, and I'm convinced that's the finish. And EO flips the counter out of the rose plant was just so smooth and perfect. It's like, holy shit. She counted up. Oh, that's Tito jumping down. She counted right out of the rose plant uh, and was able to uh, uh, to recover and survive that. But uh, in the end, Bailey did catch her with an awesome rose plant. And uh, EO Sky just sold it hilariously. Rob Van Dam used to sell RKOs that way, where he'd kind of come down early and just kind of try to land straight on his head so it just really looks sick. And that was, I think, the desired effect that Eosky was trying to have there on the uh, rose plant cell. Bailey covered her one, two, three for the win. Awesome stuff. Bailey did connect on two uh, savage elbow drops in the second one. She really landed hard on uh, the body of Eosky. I thought she crushed her a little bit, but uh, the match was great. The crowd loved it. Fans were happy. You know, Bailey from San Francisco winning a championship on Philadelphia Eagles soil. George Kittle in the front row cheering for her. Pretty funny, but Philly loved it. They were singing to Bailey during the match. Sing it. <laughs> Shout out to Okada. 
and singing Bailey, serenading Bailey uh, throughout the match. Crowd really seemed to be pro Bailey. We were pro Bailey in the chat. I'm pro Bailey. You guys better be pro Bailey. If you're not, I don't want to be friends with you. And that now leaves us, ladies and gentlemen, with the night two WrestleMania 40 main event. Roman Reigns defending his undisputed universal WWE championship against the American nightmare, if I can say it right, Cody Rhodes. Cody, one year removed from losing to Roman Reigns last year here in LA at WrestleMania 39. And we've been through quite the year of story since then. Uh, last year was an absolute disaster. WrestleMania last year, night one, was tremendous. We were all on cloud nine. 48 hours later, the world was crumbling. Night two isn't as good as night one. Roman has what many fans consider to be a disappointing victory. Then the next day, WWE announces the merger with Endeavor. Vince McMahon is back in, present at Raw, fucks the show up, does the Brock Lesnar, Cody thing. And it was like we went from Saturday night to thinking things couldn't get any better to being in absolute despair by Tuesday morning. And I haven't got, I've really wanted to shake that off. Oh, still makes me mad. And just want to get that off. And this was a good, just moving forward. And I'm happy that we've made it through this year. We've gotten back to this match. It's been a weird road to get there. And I'm happy that it was. I'm glad the rock, I'm glad that CM Punk got in the fight. I'm glad the rock decided to come back in and those elements you know, adding to the WrestleMania season, you know, made Cody's path to Roman Reigns a little bit less predictable. If it would have just been the predictable Cody wins the Rumble, challenges Roman, wins in the main event, you know, that's too predictable. That's too easy. You know, let's have some fun. And we definitely got some fun. For a while there, we started thinking that Cody's WrestleMania main event was going to be taken away from him by The Rock. And uh, the fact that it wasn't was a big relief. Apparently, there is a uh, WrestleMania behind-the-scenes documentary about how this match came to be that's going to be released on Peacock sometime in the future. They ran an ad for that this weekend or tonight, I think, or today. So we'll see if we get any more story about that. But it's been a long year, and now we are back. We had the tag team main event last night, which we predicted in order to make tonight's main event the best. We had to have... Cody and Seth Rollins losing. And that's what we got last night. The Rock pinned Cody. That makes tonight's main event, Bloodline Rules, anything goes. Stacking the deck against Cody Rhodes, shattering perhaps his confidence. But like I said, Cody's not dumb. And Cody, as a character, should know enough to be prepared. Even prior to night one, make some phone calls, send some texts. Hey, can you have my back in the event that night two is bloodline rules because you know Roman Reigns is going to have his whole goddamn family tree out there. So if you can help me out, you know, I'd appreciate it. And people stepped up. We saw that tonight. So we get we get the entrances. Cody is out first. He's joined by Brandy. Cody, first he gets, uh, I don't know, some effects on the screen there with an American Nightmare flags and like an apocalyptic scene behind it. And then Cody's music starts playing. He comes up through the stage again, and he's got like a helmet. He's got like a head thing on. Kind of reminiscent of some shit Triple H would have worn back in the day a little bit. Comes up, takes it off. Brandy shows up on stage next to him. I think they share a kiss. And it was right there that I could just see. I could see it on Cody's face. It's different than last year. Even when he got, he made the long entrance down the ramp, got into the ring. And Cody, you know, he's like Ric Flair. He cries a lot. So there was one there was one moment there where I could see him kind of sniffling up, and I'm like, that's it. That's it. That right there is the look of a man who's about to win the world championship in the main event of WrestleMania. He knows it. Most of the fans know it. It's happening. It definitely just gave off that vibe. I was not really worried to be, I was very confident about this. I've been confident for weeks. I've been saying it over and over. This is it. To not do it here would be stupid. To make the argument that Roman should win is idiotic. The only reason you're doing that is because you find uh, Cody fans annoying or something. And that's not a reason. <laughs> that's not a reason. Sorry. Uh, and it made all the sense in the world for 
him to win here, finish the story. And you could tell, you could tell right off the bat, just in Cody's demeanor and, and whatnot, you know, during his entrance. Then out comes Roman, similar setup to last year, big symphony, you know, type of thing, playing Roman to the ring. I like that. And uh, he's in there now. Paul Heyman's backing him up. He's got nobody with him. So Bloodline is at least not out there yet. And we get the big, you know, 8K introductions and whatnot. And the match is on. And it starts pretty tame. Just a regular-ass match between these two at first. They do spill out into the crowd. They go over and b- brawl next to that big platform thing that Rock and Seth Rollins were brawling over nearby last night. So they do a few things there. Uh, I think uh, Roman even takes a bump on it. Uh, They're back into the ringside area. And I think even prior to them getting to that point, Cody, right off the bat, right after the bell rings, I think there's a small little exchange in the ring, and Cody is immediately to the outside, down there looking for weapons under the ring. Like, shit, if it's bloodline rules... Might as well not wait for things to happen to me. Might as well take it to this asshole. So when he lifts up the ring apron to get one of the tables or kendo sticks or whatever he was going for out, you see a hand or an arm, a human arm. There's a human under the ring. Uh, I think that human turned out to be Jimmy Uso, but I'm also not 100% sure who that human was. But there was definitely somebody under there. So they brawl for a while. And then, you know, we're back in the ring and the first person we get in, I believe, is Jimmy Uso. So he's the one that pops out. I did not see where he materialized from. So I don't know if he ran through the crowd or if he was the one under the ring. I honestly don't know. He comes into the ring first to take out Cody and super kick him and whatnot. And then Jay Uso's music starts playing. Jay Uso comes out. He cancels out Jimmy Uso. They brawl up the ramp and Jay winds up getting a running start and spearing Jimmy off the ramp onto a table or something that was set down below. You could see it coming though, because the cameraman was positioned down on the ground, you know? So I'm like, oh shit, they're about to bump. They're about to take some bump because there's a cameraman down there. So, uh, that was the problem a couple of times tonight. You knew somebody was coming out. You, when Cena was coming out, I'm like, somebody's coming because during the match, you could see the cameraman up on the stage you know, there's silhouettes in that big green light, uh, you know, Tron, the two cameramen right there by the entrance. I'm like, they're waiting for somebody. I thought it was going to be Stone Cold, uh, and it turned out to be John Cena. But first, uh, Solo Sokoa was out next. So after Jay took out Jimmy, the next person we got, I believe, right, was Solo Sokoa. Cody had Roman Reigns in crossroads position, and we knew they had to revisit this from last year. So he's got him in crossroads position. In comes Solo. Boom, hits him with the spike. And now he's in there. So they do the same spot. Now he lifts up Cody for Roman to spear. And uh, Roman spears Cody. And I guess, I think, does he go for the pin and Cody kicks out? Is that what happens there? I can't remember. But the next person to come out is, in fact, John Cena. John Cena's music hits he comes down, He run, he's in his John Cena shit. He runs down there and he gets physical. We heard that he couldn't. We heard that a movie, he's doing a movie or something. He can't get physical. Well, he got physical. He got in there, mixed it up with Solo Sokoa, threw him on the outside of the ring and AA'd Solo Sokoa through the announce table, taking out him. And that's when The Rock came out. Out comes The Rock and he's making a beeline for Cena. And this was very cool, seeing Rock and Cena back together again he comes in the ring i'm gonna kick your fucking ass and he gets in the ring with cena and just immediately hits him with a rock bottom just puts him right down so to me it had to be stone cold if i had anything about this match if there was any part of this match that might have disappointed me a little is that we didn't get stone cold in the position that we got the undertaker in because after the rock disposed of john cena the lights went out we hear the gong The lights are out for a long time, so it makes me think that Undertaker was near the ringside area and they just ushered him through real quick. I can't imagine Undertaker at his age hanging out underneath the ring for any extended period of time. But he shows up behind The Rock. The Rock is waiting for him, of course, but he's standing right behind The Rock and he delivers a choke slam to The Rock. So we got The Undertaker delivering a choke slam to The Rock at WrestleMania 40. I will repeat that. We had Undertaker deliver a choke slam to The Rock at WrestleMania 40. That's a wild sentence, man. So then we get the Shields music playing. And I'm like, okay, one member of the Shield is in the ring right now. The other member of the Shield is in AEW. That only leaves one. 
But I was thinking, I'm like, is Seth and Moxley coming down? So they're kind of looking for him in the crowd. And I guess Seth does come through the crowd, but we don't see him. Camera doesn't pick him up. He's in shield gear. He gets in the ring and immediately gets taken out by Roman Reigns. Immediately. Just done. Just like that. Roman then whacked him with a chair, reminiscent of how Seth hit Roman when he turned and dumped the shield. So that might play into the story, I think. I think they were trying to say, like, you know, Roman focusing on Seth is what ultimately cost him here. And I did mention in my predictions, you know, Roman facing Seth next to program between these two, maybe even a SummerSlam match. Maybe that's something we're going to get now. And that choke slam neutralized the rock long enough for Cody to finish off Roman Reigns in the ring. I still thought, you know, rock was going to jump back in the ring and stop Cody. And then Austin was going to come out, but he never did. Rock never got up. That choke slam was it. Cody got a hold of Roman crossroads. Number one crossroads. Number two crossroads. Number three, one, two, three American nightmare new WWE universal champion crowd. Loved it. When that three count hit, that's a big deal, man. That's three and a three and a half plus year run for Roman Reigns. That is something that's not going to be repeated for a long time. There's not going to be another Rock or Brock for a long time. Not even Cody. Cody's not going to hold the title for three years. There's no fucking way. There's no fucking way at all. He'll be lucky to get a year. Three and a half, three and eight months, whatever it was for Roman is just incredible. So that run coming to an end, you know, he won that belt in the Thunderdome, man. (laughs) That's a lot. That's crazy, you know? So Cody getting that win, the crowd reaction to it was tremendous. And it immediately took emotional, took an emotional turn when poor Samantha Irving, who has done a fabulous job ring announcing both nights of WrestleMania. She might be in the top two announcers of all time. Think about that list. If I'm saying top two, you know who the two are. It's her and Fink. And you're talking to a a Lillian Mark. I'm a Lillian Mark. A huge Lillian Mark. I might have found a new love because Samantha Irvin was tremendous all weekend. And I was so amazed by that song. She was playing Razor's song at Wally Mania, fucking flute, and she's singing. My God, Ricochet, you got to rock on that, right? You might want to get on that if you don't. That right there is what we call a keeper. And Samantha Irving couldn't even get through the announcement. You could hear, you're win, winner. Like she could, she was so overwhelmed with joy and happiness, you know, that she couldn't even get the announcement out. And she, she sucked it up. She got it out, but it was hard. You could hear Michael Cole crying. It was awesome, you know? And he's joined, Cody's joined by what? Sami Zayn, uh, Jay Uso, Kevin Owens is out there, Randy Orton, I believe. And we've got some talent filling the ring for Cody's celebration. Brandy is also in there. Cody's mom is in there. Uh, Brandy's dad is in there. Negative one is in there. There's an AEW guy in the ring. Uh, I think we had some friends of a family of Cody as well. His sister Teal, I believe, was in there also. That's her name, I think. Isn't that her name? So Cody's sister was in there. No Dustin, unfortunately, which sucks, but it's the way it's got to be. And uh, Cody then kind of, and then, oh, before he does that, they kind of, uh, as the wrestlers are gathering in the ring, it's immediately given off WrestleMania 10 vibes because that's what happened to Brett. Luger was in, then Razor, you know, and Macho Man. Oh, CM Punk also came into the ring, by the way. Uh, You know, so it was the same thing. And I think it was like Jay and Sammy lifted Cody up, just like Razor and Lex lifted up Brett. So many parallels there. So many similarities. That was so awesome. And then Cody asks for the mic. And he wants to say a few words. And, uh, you know, he, he thanks the fans and he asks that uh, a couple of people come down to the ring, which kind of surprised me. He goes, I know they won't, they don't want me to do this, but I would not be here. I would not be in the ring right now as your new champion, had it not been for Bruce Pritchard. So I would please like Bruce Pritchard to come down uh, to the ring. I think Bruce probably, I think Bruce accompanied Vince to maybe those talks with Cody when they signed him or something. So he was probably a part of Cody getting signed and coming in. 
And then he also said that he wanted Triple H to come down. And they both did. They both came out and they came in the ring. Triple H, you know, had a face to face with Cody and just shaking his hand. And just think about these images. Think about that image of Cody and Triple H. Cody is WWE champion, shaking Triple H's hand. The two of them sharing an emotional moment side by side with Cody smashing the throne in AEW. What, that's that's why wrestling's so great. That's what makes wrestling so great is you can have, who would have thought that? Think of where you were, where your mindset was the night that Cody smashed that throne in AEW. Tell your then self what I just said, that at WrestleMania 40, Cody would be world champion and, and Triple H would give him his endorsement and they'd be shaking and, and sharing a tearful moment. <laughs> Wouldn't have been on my bingo card. And that's what makes wrestling so awesome is because fucking anything really can happen and dreams can come true. And the American Nightmares dream came true for the first time in history in the WWE. A Rhodes can call himself world champion. And that's great. And Cody getting that moment for his dad. It's great for him, man. I'm just so happy for him. And uh, it was a really nice celebration. It was exactly what I kind of wanted. I was hoping for a moment like that. I was hoping for a gathering like that. I was hoping for everybody kind of rallying around Cody. You could feel like that's where it was going, you know, because it's it's been all about shedding the Vince skin. You know, it's been very, very much about that. Going with Cody here in the end, you know, felt, you know, rather obvious, but him giving that, getting that endorsement from not only like his peers, but, you know, the company, the people you know, in charge of the company, you know, Triple H, you know, that moment between them, you could see it was almost like Cody was was saying just with his eyes, like, I'm not going to let you down. I, I'm not going to let you down. I, you know, I'm on a, this is what I wanted. I live, I, I live my whole life for this. So of course, I'm going to be the best goddamn champion I can fucking be. And I trust that Cody will. I absolutely do. I don't think you could ask for a better wrestler, a better professional, a better guy with a, with a, you know, a, a legacy name. Uh, and somebody that the fans, you know, genuinely like for the most part, win the championship. And Cody's come a long way. I didn't have these feelings about Cody when he was in AEW. You know, it's just different there. You know, so the, the WWE, you know, being able to, you know, tie so heavily into Dusty and the Rhodes name and that type of stuff is, it's just been great. You know, it's it's significant to me too. You know, it's like, it's, it's a flashbulb, but it does exist before I even understood what wrestling was. You know, looking through magazines, I see a picture of Dusty Rhodes choking out superstar Billy Graham. That's the first time my brain remembers seeing something that resembled pro wrestling. It's significant, you know, and here we are in the 40th mania of all manias, you know, and I get to watch, you know, that guy's son, you know, win the championship. And he's a guy that I like a lot. I met Cody Rhodes. I watched him in the main event last year. He's the best. So I'm, I'm happy in terms of a white meter. You know, I, I like Cody a lot. I'm all I'm not always and or often even a fan of the white meats. But occasionally one comes around, you know, and and Cody is a guy that, you know, is somebody that uh, a fan, you know, fans perspective, you guys, you know, that might be older or any of us who have just been watching wrestling for a long time or who has had pro wrestling be a significant part of your life. You know, we want champions that we can kind of be proud of, even if they aren't your direct favorites. You know, because John Cena was never my favorite, but I appreciated what he brought to the WWE after the Benoit murders, you know? Uh, and and I've, there's been lots of champions like that that were never my favorites, but I was proud to have them represent wrestling. You know, and Cody is definitely one of those guys, you know, that, uh, you know, I just kind of appreciate that he's the guy right now. So we will see how his run goes now that he is officially world champion. Tomorrow night on Raw is going to be very interesting because now that Cody is officially WWE Universal Champion, somebody brought up in the chat earlier on tonight that uh, asked if I thought that uh, WWE might drop the Universal name and just call it the WWE Championship again. I would love that. I would love that. But either way, we're going to have to address the belt situation because is Cody Rhodes now a SmackDown star or is the championship now on raw? Now, which is it? You know, I feel like something's going to have to be worked out there. Triple H said this weekend, maybe during media day, I think that uh, there is a draft coming up in a month or so is what he said. So we do have a draft coming up. 
And uh, that will probably figure all this out. We've got those two tag team championships that I think need to be figured out as well. But in terms of Cody Rhodes tomorrow on Raw, I would expect that Cody Rhodes opens the show. During WrestleMania weekend, I think it was at some sort of, uh, you know, presser or media thing at uh, WWE or the world or whatever. Cody said that if he wins the championship, he would like that belt to have a redesign. And as we said earlier in the beginning of the review, I would like Cody to have a custom belt. I don't think WWE is going to change the design of the world championship, but I do think Cody could give himself like a spinner belt or a smoking skull belt or something like that. Austin did it. Cena did it. Cody getting a custom title for as long as he's champion for, I think would be awesome, especially if they can bring back the old winged eagle title design. So I think tomorrow night, if Cody did that, that would be like a cherry on top. That would almost be too good to be true. If Cody unveiled the new American nightmare winged eagle championship belt that he's going to carry, probably will have like a white strap that he will carry probably a red, white, and blue strap. And he's going to carry that for as long as he's champion. I wouldn't be surprised at all if he does that. I hope he does. If he doesn't, I won't be disappointed. I'm still happy he's champion. I would also like to see Cody bust out the belt, the belt that he apparently owns, the one that Dusty Rhodes came an inch away from holding in WWE when he beat superstar Billy Graham but didn't win the championship, held the championship up, you know, and celebrated with it, even though he didn't win it. And Cody has, I guess, purchased the belt years later. He owns it. I think it would be really cool to bring that championship out and show it. And Cody can have three belts out there. Roman Reigns got to have three belts. That would be a great segue. You know, for the last couple of years, we've all had to watch Roman Reigns walk around with three championship belts. Well, how about Cody Rhodes has three championship belts? And he talks about the beautiful one he currently has around his waist. But then he wants to talk about the one his dad never won. And uh, there's a podium there, two other belts. He unveils one to one to show that it's uh, the, the belt from the 70s that Dusty did not win. And then he unveils the, the, the custom belt. That would be fucking sweet. I'd be perfectly fine with that. We'll see what Cody Rhodes does first. I don't even know. Like, you know, I don't know if they're going to continue this bloodline stuff. I would assume that Rock is going to be gone for a while now, but he might immediately stick around. He might be on Raw tomorrow. He might challenge Cody to a championship match. We might imagine that. Imagine that. Imagine that, y'all. Just think about it for a second. Cody Rhodes opens up the show tomorrow. Rock interrupts, challenges him to a championship match in the main event of Raw. And we get Cody and Rock, and Cody beats him. Main event of Raw. You could also save it for SummerSlam, but if Rock's going to be going away to do more shit, and we don't really specifically know right now when he's going to come back and do more wrestling stuff, maybe they do something like that. Or maybe Rock's not leaving. Maybe Rock is going to be a relatively frequent fixture on WWE for the big pay-per-views and whatnot. He's going to be back for all of them, even if he's not in the ring. He's just going to be present or something. He's going to have a match with Roman. One thing we did not see tonight was what I predicted, and that was some miscommunication between Rock and Roman. We didn't really get that. We got it last night. Roman speared Rock, but uh, Roman went down in this one, and we didn't really see any issues between them here. But that might happen now on TV. That might happen tomorrow night. They might set that in motion. Rock might... Beat down Roman. We might get some beat down of Roman Reigns. We might have Rock kicking Roman Reigns out of the bloodline. That might happen tomorrow. Or we could have Roman Reigns kicking out the Rock from the bloodline. They could blame each other. Who knows? Or they could remain united and regroup and live to fight another day. We don't really know yet what direction they're going in. We'll find out tomorrow. But anyway, what I, like I said in the beginning, I said it really did feel worth the wait. It did. It felt worth the wait to get to this. And it, it was weird last year. And man, things came crashing down on us between night one Saturday and, and Monday Night Raw on Monday. A lot changed for the worse. Uh, but now full circle, year later, WrestleMania 40 now, milestone show, crowning Cody here, getting everybody in the ring, celebrating with him. You know, the announcers crying, the ring announcer crying. You know, the, the, the CEO, COO out there 
in tears. Wrestler is just genuinely happy for him. His mom. What else do you need, man? I mean, that's pretty great shit. I loved it. Loved it. And I'm happy that we waited. It, it was worth the wait. So all of you people who were celebrating last year when Roman won, I'm glad you got your celebration because we're celebrating now, motherfuckers. Right. Oh, I didn't mention Snoop Dogg. Snoop Dogg was on the show tonight. He announced the attendance, which appeared to be pretty much exactly as last night, 72,000 and change. And Stephanie, like we talked about, opening up the show. And, you know, we are going to have a lot to talk about. I don't have the energy to talk about it here. We'll talk about it this week. But uh, apparently AEW is going to be airing the footage from All In. Tony Khan apparently might be pissed off about what CM Punk said on uh, the MMA hour there with uh, Helwani. And now they're going to air the footage of what happened with him and Jack Perry at, at, at All In. That's fucking nuts to me. We will be talking about that later this week but we're still going to be in wwe mode for the next you know at least 24 hours because as fun as this week has been we were here on thursday for the predictions we were here on friday night late if you live on the east coast you had to stay up until three in the morning to watch me finish our smackdown and hall of fame review then we were up here yesterday for night one watch along and review then we were up here tonight doing the same thing and we are back tomorrow after raw for a raw after mania review that's going to be fun too tempted to even do a watch along but i think we just need to stick to a review because that way i can put down some more podcast style comments on wrestlemania weekend plus we might learn a lot you know i'm going to be eyeballing fightful and you know all of my uh, my normal sources to see if we get any backstage news injuries stories interesting tidbits things like that about these matches it'll be fun to kind of read up on all that as well and uh, just kind of process the weekend. Overall, I think WrestleMania 40 was a success. It scared us a little bit last night on night one. Didn't have a great vibe. It was bitterly cold and windy. They didn't light up the crowd. The, the building seemed dark. It just didn't have like a WrestleMania vibe to it. It felt more like a crown jewel or something. Tonight, they fixed it a little bit. You could see a little bit more of the audience. They were shining some green lights on them. We didn't really have that last night. So that looked better. Plus it was warmer. You know, talent seemed to have a little bit more energy than they did last night. And last night was still a good show. I liked Sammy and Gunther. I really liked the main event. I was very impressed uh, with The Rock and how well he did. And I thought Becky and Rhea had a great opener. And last night wasn't bad. It just wasn't great. And it was a little bit underwhelming. And they really picked things up tonight. I thought it was a solid show. Like I said, four world championship belts changed hands on this one night alone. And we had a lot of excitement in that main event. Maybe it wasn't quite as overbooked as I wanted it to be, but they still overbooked it quite a lot with a lot of run-ins, a lot of interference, a lot of surprises. And it was, uh, you know, a really fun show, a really fun story. And I'm happy that Cody was able to finish it. So that is going to be a wrap for me for WrestleMania weekend. I'm exhausted. I'm going to kick back and uh, have some dinner and chill out. Keep an eye on the channel. I'll have another mic drop up and I'll probably split off uh, the review here and upload it as a standalone just so it exists. And I'll also uh, post push it out to the podcast feed. So I will work on that tonight. Also, keep an eye out for a link for tomorrow's raw review as soon as wwe uh, releases a graphic with cody or whatnot i'll throw up a link in a thumbnail and uh, we will be ready to rock tomorrow night after monday night raw i want to thank everybody for hanging out with me for the past two days this is what it's all about i had so much fun there was a solid few hundred of you that really remained with us throughout the entire duration of both nights i appreciate that thank you for all the chats Thank you for all the comments. Thank you for all the engagement. Thank you for all the, uh, you know, the, the memberships, the subscriptions, the likes, you know, the super chats, all that stuff. It was fun just hanging out with you guys, watching and experiencing this show together. I love it, love it, love it. This was super fun, and I can't thank you enough for being here. 